On the night in question, we were having our Christmas Eve celebration. When everyone started to leave, my aunt asked my mom if she could stay the night because my cousin had already dozed off an hour earlier. My mom said it was okay, and they started to spread the mattress out on the living room floor. By the time that they were done setting up, it was well past midnight, and everyone started to drift off. I woke up in the middle of the night. I had no idea what time it was. I spotted something out of the corner of my eye, and I sat up. There was a young girl who was staring at the wall facing away from me. It was very unsettling. I assumed that my niece was just sleepwalking, so I laid back down. My eyes felt heavy after that, and before I knew it, I passed out. It was early the next morning I woke up. I heard a conversation between my aunt and my parents. I got up to see what they were talking about, and I heard them discussing something that happened the night before. So I asked my aunt what she was talking about, and she began to tell me about her sleep paralysis. She told me that she had suddenly woken up and was unable to move, and naturally she became scared. She then heard footsteps coming up the stairs and saw an unfamiliar young girl with pigtails and ribbons in her hair walking up the steps toward my room. She lay motionless in the living room when the young girl eventually came back downstairs, where she stood looking at my aunt. The young girl suddenly sprinted towards my aunt and jumped on her. That's when she woke up screaming. Which alerted my parents, who went to go check on her. I then mentioned to her that I had also seen the girl she was talking about, thinking that it may have been my niece. I never got a good look at the girl in my room, but from what my aunt described, the description did not match my niece whatsoever. This coincidence is just too strange to wrap my mind around. How was I fully awake and moving while my aunt was going through sleep paralysis? Yet we saw the same young girl. Could it have been a spirit? Perhaps even a demonic presence? Why did it attack my aunt and not me? I'm afraid that these questions will likely never be answered. I was barely 22 when I got married. We bought our first home just outside of Portland, Oregon. It was a cozy 900 square foot house with three bedrooms and a nice big backyard. It was the perfect place to raise a family. I lived with my parents until I got married, so all of this was very new for me. Since my childhood, I've heard ghost stories and I've always found the paranormal to be interesting but I never experienced anything of the sort myself. The first several months of living there were uneventful. Then odd things began happening here and there that no one could explain. One day I was alone in the kitchen making dinner, when a quarter dropped on the counter right in front of me. It was out of nowhere. Startled, I looked up, trying to figure out where it fell from. Coins just don't fall out of thin air but this one did. This would only be the tip of the iceberg. There would be times where my husband and I would be watching TV and the lamp would turn off, or if it was already off, it would flicker on. The TV did the same. It would be in the middle of watching a show and it would just turn off to break the tension. We would joke that the ghost didn't like the show, but we knew that what was happening was unnatural and unsettling. Things went on like that for the next year. When I became pregnant, things progressed. About seven months into my pregnancy, my husband's friend, Sam, came by to have some beers with him in the hot tub. Now Sam was six foot two and a self-proclaimed tough guy. The tub was on our back porch just outside of our bedroom window. Being pregnant and tired, I went to bed. But just as I was falling asleep, I heard this loud crash from outside the bedroom, and it jolted me awake. At first, I thought the guys had dropped the hot tub cover, since it was pretty heavy. Just to be sure, I got up and exited my bedroom and walked over to the sliding glass door, which was ajar. 
I saw my husband just standing there, frozen in fear. Hey, what's wrong? Why are you just standing there? He pointed toward the dining room floor behind me and stuttered. The, the, the vent. I looked at the floor and I saw the hole where the metal heating vent was supposed to be. Where's the vent? It's over there. He pointed to the wall and I saw it lying on the floor. I was really confused. What's it doing all the way over there? My husband is not a believer in the paranormal. He actually mocked the idea. He then said, I was just coming inside to grab a few things and the vent just flew across the room by itself. I walked over to the vent and I saw a gouge in the wall where it slammed against it. Sam and my husband came inside and joined me in the living room. The light suddenly flickered and went out and the TV turned on. Sam, Mr. Tough Guy, then said, Oh, fuck this noise. He grabbed his wallet and keys and hurried out the door, still dripping wet. We were a bit freaked out, but my husband rationalized that it had to be an electrical problem. And as for the vent, he blamed the cat, which was clearly not the case. But I think he was just too scared to admit that our house was haunted. Later that night, when we just got ourselves tucked in, we heard our bedroom door creak open. For a moment, we both saw a dark mass standing there, but it quickly dissipated into the darkness. We thought someone had broken in. I turned on the light, and there was nothing there. My husband got up and quickly checked the entire house. When he returned to the bedroom, guess who he blamed? That's right, the cat. I have never met anyone in such denial. It was either our house was haunted, or I had a cat who could throw vents across rooms and open closed doors. Things only got worse when my son was born. I felt something gawking at me from somewhere just out of sight. Sometimes it would be a benign presence, almost like it was friendly. My son learned how to walk at a very early age. When we got him a bed, my husband decided to put a thick carpet in his room. This is important because the carpet was so thick that when you close the door to the bedroom, it had to be done with force. My husband said he should have shaved the bottom of the door to make things easier, but he never got around to it. When we put my son to bed, I always left his door open a couple of inches or so, so we could listen in for him, in case he woke up in the night. One night while we were in bed, we heard our son's door open as it scraped against the rug. We then heard footsteps going down the hall. James must have gotten out of bed. I got up and flipped on the hall light, searching for my son, but he was nowhere to be found. I walk over, and I see him still sleeping in his bed. There is no way a toddler could get up, walk down the hall, then back to his room, get back into the bed and cover himself up in blankets, and pretend to be asleep. I was up within seconds, I would have seen him. I went back to bed and told my husband that our son was still sleeping. But. We both heard the door open and heard him walking down the hall. Huh, it was probably the cat again. Unbelievable. This happened the next night and the next. Always the same scenario. The door opened and footsteps would walk down the hall. On the fourth night when we heard it, my husband told me to go check on our son. No, I've done it the past three nights. You do it this time. Of course, when he went to go check, our son was still sleeping. This went on for the next few years. Our cat must have been one crafty devil. Our daughter was born a couple of years after my son. We would still see the shadowy figure from time to time. The lights would still flicker, and the TV turning on and off, etc. I would be playing with my kids, and I always felt like something was watching us. 
One time, I remember disciplining my son with a painless swat on his bottom because he wouldn't share a toy with his sister. The energy in the room suddenly shifted and the atmosphere became heavy. It was like whatever was watching us didn't like me disciplining my son. The day finally came and it was time for us to move. I was saying goodbye to my neighbor, an old woman who went by the name of Jerry. In our last conversation, she told me that she had lived on that street for over 50 years and knew every family who ever lived in that house. She said that she was close friends with the old woman who lived there before us. Apparently, she had gotten sick and died in my son's room. Jerry never brought it up until now because she didn't want to creep us out. It explained a lot. I was convinced that the shadow we saw and the strange events that took place in that house was the spirit of the old woman who hadn't moved on. Of course, my husband wouldn't hear any of it. I feel like had I known this, maybe I could have talked to her. I know this sounds dumb, but perhaps she felt that we were intruding into her space. These events took place over 20 years ago. My kids, of course, have no memory of it, and my husband and I divorced many years later. He never would accept the paranormal explanation. Even to this day, he still blames the cat, who lived to be over 20 years old, by the way. As for Sam, he didn't visit us for months after the heating vent incident. When he finally did, it was only during the daytime. I still wonder if the spirit of the old woman has moved on, or is still haunting that place to this day. A few years ago when my boyfriend, who is now my husband, and I first started dating, I moved into an apartment with my two-year-old daughter. The property was around 200 years old and had a separate garage. I lived on the bottom floor, and there was one unfinished apartment upstairs. At this time, we were the only tenants in the building. I was so excited to move in. It was a big step for me, as I had been living with my mom two years after having to leave my abusive ex fiance It was the beginning of the rest of my life. However, the excitement didn't last long. The first night that we were there, it always felt like I was being watched from somewhere just out of sight. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't shake this feeling. At first, I thought it was just all in my head, that my previous trauma was making me paranoid. I left a nightlight on in the bathroom, which illuminated the hallway, so I had a good view of things from my bedroom doorway. Not long after we settled in, I heard footsteps in the upstairs apartment in the middle of the night. After hearing it every night for about a week, I contacted my landlord and I asked him if someone had moved in or if he had someone working on the apartment upstairs late at night. He said no, but suggested that the building was old and it could have been swelling or creaking. I don't think so because I had grown up in a house that was just as old as this one and wood swelling never sounded like someone stomping around with heavy boots but he knew the place better than I did, so I just let it go. Then, there was the furnace. That thing disturbed me. I know it sounds crazy, but it was like the furnace was alive. It didn't make noises like a normal furnace would. It would make sounds when it was completely turned off. It would randomly come to life and start growling and moaning. It sounded like a wounded animal caught in a trap. It was truly unsettling. There was clearly something wrong, but I had to ignore it. My daughter started waking up at night as soon as the furnace would kick on. She would babble for a while before going silent when the furnace started moaning. She would then laugh and babble some more. If I didn't know any better, I would say that they were communicating with each other. One night she was carrying on like usual, when suddenly, the furnace went completely silent. And my daughter started screaming and crying at the top of her lungs. My boyfriend and I ran into the room and found her lying in bed, staring straight up at the ceiling, shaking and screaming. 
Even as I held her and tried to calm her down, it took a while before she was able to catch her breath and look at me. I had never seen her so terrified before, so I took her into bed with me. The furnace didn't make a sound for the rest of that night. I was laying in bed with my daughter when the air suddenly became unbearably thick. It was hard to breathe. I looked over and I saw a dark figure materialize at the end of the hallway, watching us. I just stared at it until it eventually faded away. I was hoping what I saw was just an optical illusion, but I knew deep down that what I saw was the thing living in the furnace. My daughter and I started having nightmares every night, and neither of us felt comfortable sleeping in the apartment alone. The usual symptoms began. Random items would fall over. Doors would open on their own. Dishes would clank around in the kitchen when no one was there. The doors on the cabinet would pop open randomly. So many other things happened there. So many sleepless nights. There are too many accounts to list them all out here. But after six months of living there, we decided we had enough and it was time to move out. When that decision was made, the feelings of being watched and the dense air went away. My daughter waking up at night came to a stop. The nightmare was over. After we left, a nice old lady moved into the place after her husband passed away. Within three months of living there, the apartment suddenly caught fire. Luckily, the lady was not home at the time, but refused to move back in even after it had been repaired. After the investigation, no one could determine what caused the fire. It just happened out of nowhere and destroyed everything inside. Whatever is living in the furnace clearly doesn't like sharing that apartment with anyone else.